I have a tendency to refuse what my wife asks me to do for no apparent reason. Both of us consider this as some kind of conditioning in me and we joke about it sometimes. But there are situations when it is not so funny. How to overcome this? <laughs> the ground is to wake up. <laughs> it's always about to awaken. Once you come to know who you are, then you, there is no more separation, then you will relate towards intelligence, you will no more own intelligence. You follow what I'm saying? What you think you are, uh, what you're thinking, the creativity of mind is not the intelligence. It comes out of intelligence, but it is not intelligence. And if you identify yourself, I'm a man or I'm a woman, there's immediately stupidity comes through, isn't it? Then this woman, ah, they're just emotional and hysterical. And the man is just maybe intellectual and muscle or whatever. What we think, it's so immediately there is stupidity coming, there is no real respect. Soon you have a certain identity, there is a certain arrogance with that, you understand? There is no real respect there, you understand? But soon you come to know who you are, even if your wife doesn't know. But you know as well, it is true to your wife and you will not anymore even relate having this relationship than man and woman, you will only relate towards intelligence, towards source, which is always dominant, always here. If you ignore the ignorance, you understand? Once awake, enlightened, if you're not a master, I, I take care of ignorance, but normally if I'm relating, I don't see nowhere in Ignorance, I'm not a therapist or anything, you feel what I'm saying? I just spontaneously relate and there is always pure intelligence source. And the other, your wife will immediately notice the respect and both. So then there is no more, I know it better in that way, or there is no competition about it. Who knows it better? It is just simply what is the best is the case, it doesn't matter from where it comes from, you understand? So this is the habit mm -hmm. everybody has. And this is a ditch and you do not know how not to ditch. It is really removed, only really removed once you wake up, you understand? Once mind is liberated as well. This is what I speak about liberation of mind, this comparison has to disappear. You understand? Just to know who am I is not enough. You still continue to have a relationship, sheep, ship. To have a relationship is the other, your wife, and I am the man. This is a relationship, or your mother, your father. There is a certain package attached to that, isn't it? A, a certain flavor attached to it, you understand? I mean, you can still say daddy, mother, but once you awake and know who you are and everybody is, you, there will be no package with it, you will just simply relate, there is all the respect with that, you understand? And so I do not know about your wife, you say you have the tendency that you, your wife telling you to do things like empty the garbage bin or the, uh, the garbage or things like that. It may be anything. What, what do you mean? It may, be, it may be, and she asks me to do something. Yeah? And Shopping. Whatever it might be. Okay, or you she makes me over these things, please. Or there is a statement, uh, she does a statement, and I have a, ten a tendency to refuse. Yeah? Uh, okay, it's about opinion as well. Can be. You talk about opinion. It can be. You know, this is also. Uh, if you have uh, opinion, you discuss about certain things, yes? This is mostly always about relative truth. You know, it is all changeable, you understand? You have your opinion about certain things. And what is so natural for the mind, if somebody comes with a certain op opinion, you will notice that you immediately speak the opposite. If somebody comes with so-called, let's say, bad news, 
talks about bad news, bad news. Immediately, this mind you from the other side, you will come, oh, there is good news about it. You speak about the good news, about the bad news. You follow it. Immediately, the mind speaks the opposite. And it is because this mind somehow likes to complete, wants to speak what the other doesn't speak, so wants to speak the other part of it, you understand? And so for that reason you always see yourself speaking the opposite. And you wonder how come. It is just simply nature for this mind. Just if mind is not liberated, there is a lot of trouble with it, you understand? And as well, in that time when mind is not liberated, you can't truly make a distinction between what is now so relative truth or the ultimate truth. Because relative truth is so changeable, you can any time change your opinion. You, wait a minute, you know, I have already changed my opinion. It's just the opposite, you understand? But we think mostly that the relative truth as if it's the ultimate truth. And this is some people they even should each other for relative truth, thinking this is the ultimate truth. You, there is this war going on and you get so identified with it because you think it is the ultimate truth. And you wonder with this active mind and thoughts which then coming towards you, you, you understand. So the ground is to awaken. This, this is the shortcut and the only way. You follow what I'm saying? is to take care from the very root what is true. Then these things, once I say in intensive satsang, we take care of this mind, we take care of these things. I can't tell you how you can move out. There's no how. There is to come to know from the very root what is true. You will not even ditch there. It is, this question is when the earth is flat, you understand? This is on the flat earth happening there, yes? Does it make sense I'm saying here? Yeah, is it so answered? I think it is answered, but maybe I can extend it a little yes, bit more. Yes, okay. Um, so you say, uh, once awakened, even subconscious... Liberated. Uh, yeah. li once liberated, even subconscious reflexes disappear. Yeah, it will disappear. Yeah. It will most probably disappear if you're godless about it. This is how it happened. It, it will disappear because the, the, the root has been taken care of. You are no more in a comparison. And comparison and competition is so together. This is the spin and lose game you have because you do not relate to its intelligence. There is nobody to own it. It is true to all the living beings. If they don't know so, do not know so. And it is dominant, but it is covered of, of, with that non-liberated mind who is re not relating but having a sheep with everybody. You understand? There is this you and this I are not relating. So if this relating is there, there is, it is naturally taken care of. Many things. Yeah, what I believe is that this behavior comes from my childhood relationship with my parents. This is doing groups. These okay. are excuses, why you don't shoot yourself. These are excuses. This is your wrong vision, it, it doesn't matter. You have this behavior, but I tell you, everybody has this behavior. You're not the only one who has this behavior, and they had other experience, different experience. So these are just excuses. This is doing therapy, analyzing. This doesn't lead nowhere. You feel what I'm saying? This is figuring it out in your thinking process. Okay, there's a time you want to do so, and uh, maybe uh, there is a relative truth, but it's not s going to help you, uh, send you free in any way. It's only giving you a reason why it is so, and why you can't just stop that. I don't like, you call it a tendency, tendency, you call it tendency? I call it a tendency, yeah. It does, yes. not, ha it does not happen I, always. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I understand, but I... It is unconscious, it appears to be totally <laughs> unconscious, yeah? Yeah, it just comes up like that. Yes. Yes, yes, but you can also feel it if it comes up. It doesn't feel very comfortable when it comes up. And most of the time I don't notice it. And my wife tells me, no, look at this one. Here is it again, yeah? That's the way it is. Yeah, reads. I mean, I do not know the circumstance, what it is all about. You understand, you mm -hmm. uh, both uh, not really relating. There is no truly respi respect. 
for each other. It's like uh, what I hear that your wife may just simply ask to be part of uh, the movements, what is happening, that you may, uh, can you please hand, uh, give me a help? You know, it is a way of respect, you understand? Uh, can you give me just the salt over there? Could you just in the kitchen bring me also this and that? This is kind of nice, isn't it? Sure. To, to, to make no difference uh, with the role we play right uh, this now and having a certain spontaneity and a natural caring, which is your nature, you understand? It is not taking energy away, it enhances rather, you understand? Mm -hmm. It's more fun, it is a play, this is being playful, you, you understand? Yeah. Is it more so answered now? I think, I yes. think it is answered now, okay. thank you. Yes. Different beliefs and expectations seem to be the cause for conflict. How to handle this in daily life, for example in a relationship or with the own children? Belief and what? Expectations. Expectations. This is all beliefs and expectation, these are uh, the conflicts, yeah. I, this is what I speak of, liberating this mind. Even to come to know who you are, this mind is still in the wrong vision and keeps on. There is so much, it, just to know I'm consciousness, awareness, or whatever you may understood, you know. Your vision is still wrong, you follow. Any seeker or people on the path, who meditate, they know about awareness, consciousness, and how many times you have yet. But it is something you remember and you are still in the wrong vision. You understand? It is not yet, your, it's not your vision. It is rather knowledge. Mostly people, they can't make a no distinction between knowing and knowledge, because the word is so the same, isn't it? But that's all the different. Knowing, it is, knowledge is not knowing, you follow what I'm saying? I make difference. There is a difference between knowledge and the knowing, you follow what I'm saying? Can you elaborate this a little bit? I don't know if I can, I, I don't think really, I can speak more about it, you know, so you don't, you understand, you follow what I'm saying? If you're authentic, you know so. There is a lot of, I, being on the path, I had no problem with getting hints, but I did not confuse that I know so. You understand? So I would not collect it as a knowledge and think I know. This is often people collecting it as a knowledge and think they know. This is not the knowing. Yeah, I understand. For myself, I could see the hints, but I know I do not know. I am not, I am not in that vision. It is only a hint for me that it is not the becoming, for example. It's a very beautiful hint. It doesn't mean that I shouldn't do anything. It doesn't mean to me like that, but mm. this logical conclusion mm. we make out of it, hearing all this Ramana sentence, thinking, oh yes, I'm already enlightened. Okay, good. Yes, so, and yeah. You say about beliefs and expectation, because you do not know who you are, you have expectation. But this are being on the path, this is your wrong vision, your duality vision. And you have a lot of expectation, but with expectation also all the disappointments are coming with that, frustration comes with that. And it, you many times get really hurt, more and more hurt. And you notice something is wrong with expectation, isn't it? And you're looking for that relaxation beyond that when you do not expect anything, to find uh, uh, yourself somewhere when there is no need for anything and I can be satisfied with that, you understand? Not needing anything, not ha having any expectation to value what is. To wanna come. This is also being on the path where you keep on practicing that. This is where this mind is so busy every day. I'm talking to liberate this mind, to free this mind from all that. You follow what I'm saying? It is uh, because you were asking me, can you in the open satsang, could you tell me what kind of investigation? I can't really tell you. 
because this is an underground meeting, it's kept secretly and safe for the people who are ready for that, you understand? Because I don't want uh, this spread like a Ramana sentence, it loses its value like that, you understand? You follow what I'm saying? Yes. So we keep it safe and I trust people who wake up, they know exactly what I speak to keep that safe, you know. So, desires, expectation, what was the other word I forgot again? Conflict, create conflict, yeah? Yeah, creating conflict, there's not much I can say about it, you have said it, you know. So how to be free, it's always again to awake, to liberate this mind. Awakening is to come to know who am I. It is a relief. It is a laughter. It is good news for this beloved son's mind. Once, once this mind is ready to wake up and come to know why, because this will free this mind. Mind can be at ease and know I'm not needed. Now God came out of its coma. I'm no more needed. You follow what I'm saying? I can relax. So this is already something very beautiful and it is the crown. This is when, when we can take care of this beloved son's mind to awaken, you understand? So awakening is to come to know and to liberate this mind. This is what I call what is enlightenment. It, yes, the recognition can only be there once this mind is complete in its liberation, not with this duality vision and all this conflict we talk right now about it. Mm -hmm. This is not a liberated mind, do you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes? This triggers another question in me. Uh, wh uh, what can be done not to fall asleep at all, right from the beginning? The, the, the here's the impression that children are empty and uh, somehow as enlightened as somebody yeah. can be, but somehow it, 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 there seems to be a time when you fall asleep, you run into this separation game, this win and lose game. So okay. What could parents do to protect children, fr their own children, of course, uh, from falling too deep into that sleep? Okay, I say to you, a baby born, a human baby born, a bundle of love, pure and intelligence and innocence. You want to protect, isn't it? Little Buddha, you know? Till it become, grows up and becomes a monster, isn't it? Who knows how scary a monster is going to become, you know? <laughs> but a baby born, this innocence, it is ignorance, if what I'm saying. This baby born, innocent, this is pure source, pure intelligence, but it is innocent, it is not the true innocence. Because this baby, this human baby has a potential to awaken, to come to know itself by itself, to come to know source, to awaken. So it is also nature, this baby born, innocent, has no idea of boundaries or separation, no idea, does not even know how to put name and form, so for that reason, boundaries don't even exist, only just simply see, ah, you understand? But then it naturally, when this mind starts to function, the brain has to grow a little while and this mind has to start to function, this is a body-mind organism, to function in the play of Lilla, so it has brought itself about potentiality, a creativity of mind which function and put name and form and so on. And so this mind grows to a certain time and suddenly this uh, baby looks in the mirror and it can recognize I'm in that mirror. And this is when it, the duality starts. So this baby, this child, has to move first into ignorance naturally has to move first into the boundaries, what I can see, oh, what I can touch, this is bird, this is dog, this is car, this is mommy, this is daddy, oh, you know, this is naturally to move into the boundary vision and then sooner or later this is what we think, this is all there is and this is the only value, value where, where only the value is. And then maybe later, 
if you're in love with nature or not even then, you get a little bit romantic, you look into the sky and you... Everybody has brought with itself God as a separate entity. You know, this is, we bring this with us, us and we look for God. Because as a human, sooner or later you will ask yourself, it is so nature, how it come that I'm suddenly here? You understand? You, as a human, you have to move first into ignorance. My cat doesn't know, you follow what I'm saying? A cat, mm -hmm. a dog, is innocent because they have not the potentiality to awaken, but a human is ignorant. And if not wake up, this non-liberated mind can be very violent, so violent, you c nature can't even come close towards that, you follow what I'm saying? So we have both the direction to awaken, to know your very nature, which is goodness itself, there's nothing cruel or schizophrenic or stupid about your nature, about you, only this non-liberated mind, this is what is the violence, if all I'm saying. This is what is Maya, your wrong vision is Maya, not the play of leather, it's innocent. Beauty, you reflected, Intel intelligence overflowing, source seeing itself as an appearance, there is no separation. With that, you follow what I'm saying? So, you lose innocence as a child. It starts basically, really, when you get into mess. It starts when you go in a kindergarten, when you go in school, when the comparison starts. Comparison. Some children uh, already know five language with three years and you don't even know yet how to count the superiority and inferiority complex so this is when this suffering uh, this you and I and comparison starts uh, what a pain it is and then this expectation you think in some ways there you should fulfill and you can't your stomach hurts you feel sick because you can't, you follow what I'm saying? So there is this uh, samsara starts being in the wrong vision. And for myself, my circumstance completely, I had in a way no choice. I, I really, all the force towards awakening, I could not in any way fulfill certain expectation. I couldn't physically, I couldn't. For my stomach, I couldn't. The way I grew up, I couldn't. It was all just, I bound to live in India. <laughs> you follow me? I did not understand the word. I say I bound to live in India. Okay. <laughs> my, my mother, what she used to do, she was an alcoholic, and, uh, but I loved her very much. She's all the reason why I'm in love is meditation, that I'm on the path, and this is a great background I have for being actually a teacher, my mother. I, I knew not, not much from the books, I know it from life itself. But what she used to do is she used to heat this kitchen up. It was like hell, <laughs> hot, <laughs> fire, and uh, the, the windows were all closed, the wooden thing, it was always closed, it was dark and light on, and it was just hot in there, always hot. So preparation for me to live in India, yeah. so I could handle the high season, I assume now, <laughs> looking back, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> So I think, yes, okay, I'm, I'm getting lost, okay. Yeah, so you lose your innocence. Because this innocence you're born with, it is ignorant because you have a potential to awaken. For you, it is not innocent. For nature, yes, but not for you. So you move into the boundary vision and you go, get into suffering, into the samsara. 
And so it depends, you know, if you're really good in school, you may make first money, you have a family, you have a car, you have a house. If you can fulfill certain things easily, then you can do that. You, you will bound to do so. You understand what is expected from you. But sooner or later, you may, if you're lucky, you will still suffer with that. You notice there is something more, this body is soon going to die and I'm in trouble and my, my, with my wife and I'm not really enjoying this moment, what I have and so on. And then you may go from there. Somehow you ask yourself, what is beyond that body? Is there anyone on the planet who knows something? You go somewhere on the search, you understand? And if you're lucky, you're awakened. And this is then once you come to know who you are, source, with that there is no identity. There is no body. You understand? There's not a, a somebody or a sense of a somebody. It is your nature. If you now know so or don't know so, but there is. But to know so, this is the true innocence. It is not the not knowing. Not knowing is ignorant. A human, you have to wake mm. up, you have to come to know. Once you come to know, mind is liberated has come to know too. Then you are at ease with a not knowing. There is nothing for you to think. And then there is wisdom in your eyes. And this is the true innocence. You follow what I am saying? So you have to move from ignorance towards truth. Otherwise then you know. Yeah. You, through, in, uh, uh, through ignorance, through your wrong vision, you come to know what is true. It yeah. is needed. And in a way, as well, the mind is needed. Sure. A developed mind is needed. Not what the animal has also a mind. Mm -hmm. And some people say there is no mind. There is no mind to liberate. This is so, so, so bullshit. It's so philosophizing. Feels so, ah, look, where is the mind? Can you see any mind? Can you see? <laughs> ah. So bullshit. I mean, this is a f philosopher. They must have talked about yes. This is a good idea. There's no mind. Let's provocate that one and confuse uh, the how, world. How, eh? bullsh <laughs> how, how bullshit! You know, I mean, I would never feel attracted even to go there. They have nothing to share. They can only share. Ha huh, ha! Huh, this is you. Bye mm -hmm. bye. Hi hi. And uh, I could say intensive satsang after four days. Okay, now you can leave, isn't it? But at least they would know who am I. But it is not enough to know who am I. You know? Soon or later there is a so what. Mind is not satisfied just to know this kind of things, what we collect. We have so many words and I don't agree with anything of that, honestly. But this is what I share in intensive. Because I want to immediately take care to liberate this mind. That there is no chance to turn away from that ever. You follow what I'm saying? It's a great roar to know who am I. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, even enlightened or awakened parents could not prevent uh, the children to at okay. least temporarily come into a sleep. No, 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 no. This is not. Uh, um, there is nothing you can prevent them that they do not get lost with the appearance and being in the boundary vision. They have to go into that, they have to come through, otherwise they, they, uh, there will be no awakening. They have to see first, they ha you have to come to know first your ignorance. You follow what I'm saying? You can't just uh, read books and pretend. You have to come to know first your ignorance and move out of that. This is path of awakening, you understand? Yes. So it is natural. You can't, you can pretend with uh, believing, with your philosophizing, with your sentence you have collected, as if not, but you have to be very honest. You want to wake up, uh, not mm -hmm. just impress people, or being impressed by your own thoughts, you follow what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you honestly, there is no, uh, if you are, Authentic, honest, you have no competition about awakening, you don't care how long it takes, you understand? The people come for question answer, they come to help me. They don't need to prove I'm enlightened or not, 
Do you understand? There's no competition about that. It's just also a funny, nice meeting here, isn't it? It's, we enjoy each other. Sure. We, we are, nobody is following me, you understand? We have just the, people support me with what I'm doing because it is so rebellious and they like yeah. it. So they want me to roar. Yes, yes. Yeah. Sure. So what was it? And get carried away. What was? Oh yes, there is. Uh, but enlightened, having being with your children, you will relate towards your children, relate towards source. And there is always a natural respect with that. You understand? You will be able to balance that. You will notice this child goes through things. It studied the boundaries. It studied this and studied that and has to teach. It has to, to try this one by bad you. You understand, but in the same time you always re relate towards source, towards pure intelligence. There is no separation. And there is a natural respect with that. And for that reason, a child will will always notice somewhere dominant. There is always humor. Your nature is humor and intelligence. So you can't get that bad, you follow what I'm saying? You can get, you can maybe even afford to be quite bad because you so in touch with, in touch is a wrong name to say because, mm -hmm. but that, that your parents always relate towards your nature and pure intelligence. This is uh, the child will always, it's just always so there, so dominant. It will balance everything. So, you follow what I'm saying? Yes, I think so. Yes, yes. yes. It, this is helpful. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it will have to go into ditches, maybe drugs, and try this and that. You understand? It has to be wrong, so called wrong. It has to be asleep in order to awaken. Uh. Yes, and has to know so. Yeah. And you have to come to the ocean. To is, know so then is so good to make us alert about our ignorance first, you understand? We have to come to know first the ignorance. our ignorance. Yes, but naturally, you should become naturally because uh, ignorance makes you suffer, you understand? Mm. There is, this is this alarm, oh, hey, hey, that hurts, this feels kind of, oh, yeah, you understand, you follow. Okay, I think with the next question we touched already some points, but i just repeat it again. What are your reasons for not speaking outside the last satsang about what is the final truth? and what happens in the last satsang. <laughs> yeah, the last satsang is the last effort. It is truly for liberation. And it has to be a surprise for this mind to awaken, you follow what I'm saying? A surprise. It is not to speak about it in the pu public, you understand, to create uh, some knowledge and philosophy, philosophy about it. It is not to talk, I don't talk about uh, intensive satsang. People just simply are too awakened. I don't speak anything before they do not know for themselves, can recognize this to be true. So in the beginning it is very much first step it is to have to come to know who am I and then we go through certain investigation till there's a turn and a shift and the vision is right. Only then I start to speak and speak about things you may want to ask. I don't do that in the open satsang about essential truth about to speak. If you want to hear about it, go on the internet, right, type in Google, Google or is it Google? Google. <laughs> type in who am I and then you will have all the answers. Why I should speak, isn't it? It is not how I share, if what I'm saying. I can't. I would rather shoot myself. It's to learn all why, how I share. I'm authentic. I'm not going along the books. I'm not, oh, is this right? What Ramana say, what is Punjachi, is this, is it right, equal? People, sometimes I have the feeling when they teach, they try to be 
write with the books. It's so bullshit. If you're awake, you, you, you don't need any books. You know, so it is complete. I have always these pictures there. This is my gratitude, which is endless for Gangaji, for Punjaji, for Osho, for. Did I forget somebody? Ah, Ramana. I express my gratitude to these people. You understand? Because they are responsible for me to awaken. But the sharing is Dulano sharing. You feel what I'm saying? When I speak. You know, that's why it is surprisingly true and it is not something I go blah blah and I don't want anyone else to go blah blah about my last satsang. And people who wake up, they know that. Why? I don't need to explain really. Because they can see it in that process. Why it has to be an underground meeting and surprise for this beloved son's mind who is ready to awaken. Does it make sense? So I hear by not speaking about it, you avoid confusion. Yeah. I mean, just what, 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 is, what is blah, 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 you know, this is the last satsang, you know, mm. I, I don't want, and also it's like it, it, it would take, it takes all the intensity away, whatever you, That's there's nothing, you can't talk about that, you, you know you don't, you wake up or you don't, you understand, it's not something, so long you have to talk about, you have not woken up, because truly awakened, it makes you quiet, you don't want to talk about this you, anymore, you understand, it's even difficult for myself often to talk, that's why I have to sit here, my official clothes, such and close to where this is when I talk, you follow? And intensive satsang, the letters, and I really want to help these people because I, I know I can help. You know, in a funny, rebellious way, you understand? Yeah, and I choose the people who are ready for that, who have seen. You have to see first how it doesn't work, and you have to try first because mind obviously has to try. Mind, come on, I can do it. Yes? And I almost did. I'm going to try it five years longer. Good. I'm almost there. So it is the tendency or it is nature for this mind that I can do it. I am the smart one. I am intelligence. You know, I can become a Buddha. I'm going to do it. Don't worry, you sleep. I do it. There's a great difference to be like a Buddha than to be a Buddha, you understand? If you like a Buddha, you, I don't know, you have all these ideas. To be a Buddha, to be awakened, it is truly also over. You can only talk Seinfeld talks, life itself, it's just, you understand. Spirit talk and things are over, you follow what I'm saying? This deep talk you have with somebody oh, about the poor me story, about analyzing and deep, deep talking, yes? You have deep question, yes? You told me when you came, oh, I have deep, 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 digging, digging, deep question for you. I say there's nothing to dig, <laughs> to go deep, deep. <laughs> These meaningful talks, oh, we had such a meaningful, deep conversation. As if what is now has no value at all. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, I believe I understand. Yes, good. So, what are your recommendations to get ready for the last satsang as quickly as possible? Quickly as possible, buy a ticket and pack very fast. <laughs> but but you might not you might not accept me. <laughs> yeah, right, right. This is exactly how it is. You know, quickly slowly can be very quick. You follow what I'm saying? <laughs> There's no real speed, you know. <laughs> 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 I don't know if mm. this uh, fits with physics. <laughs> <laughs> Physic physics could fix. physics could is fit. mind and mind needs speed and time and space yes. and I <laughs> mean you know uh, what is uh, so reflected it is source 
perfection. It is source reflected, it is the perfection, it is all you. And it is very natural for the mind, uh, should start it uh, appearance, it is for the mind to do so. But you have to come to know beyond that as well, to come to know who is. Soros wants to know, I'm sure, <laughs> he's sending mind there, you become smart, you stop bullshitting, hurting your wife and being in a win and lose game, you better wake up and study the boundary, I want to know a bit more about the boundaries. <laughs> 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 study the universe, I don't know, I'm just choking right now. So, I don't know what to say, it's a good thing to listen, be a light unto yourself. You know, there's a time you go along the books, you know, you go, you do groups, you read books and you feel it makes sense, you feel like it makes some sense and you go along and you may do groups and uh, life itself is uh, provoking you to go certain directions. This is what I wanted to say for myself, there was a continual provocation for me to go a certain direction, even I may want to go another direction because I think I'm expected to go the other one, but what I can do? My stomach... <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Yes. Now my stomach is fine. Yep. <laughs> so... Listen to my open satsang, friends, friendsoftolano.com.org. Listen to this audio and see for yourself. Sometimes people, they hear me and they don't feel attracted towards or they're not ready. They write this to me. Oh, it didn't make sense. Some years I have been. And now uh, emergency has, and now she listen and, and uh, you know, it's all just makes sense suddenly, yes. So, uh, I can only say to be slow can be very fast. Well, you never know. Mm -hmm. You understand? Is this so answered? I just would like to make one more confirmation yes. about your last point. Listen to the open satsangs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, during the preparation of these interviews, yeah, I, yeah. I am doing this, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and it still it works. Uh, it, it it works and works and works. Yes, uh, yes. From my point of view, this is high high value stuff yeah, for yeah, somebody yeah. who yeah, yeah. gets touched by it. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I mean, my way of talking is not very articulated. My English is very. You know, but in a way it's good because it's not only for these articulated people that can read the books and repeat, I'm so bad talking, <laughs> <laughs> and repeat the books later, <laughs> and write a book themselves then. At least it is a language I speak, anyone can uh, understand without having to go to the vocabularies, you know. I mean, I don't this impressive language, it triggers a lot of, you imagine things, you know, mm. you understand. Mm. And it is not about imagining anything, it's all here. You can relax, you don't need to imagine anything, it's all here. In the midst of appearance and beyond, it's all now, there's only now, if there's no appearance, the play of Lilla, the body, or beyond, it's all now. Now is always eternal. This is what is, what counts, what really counts. And where the truth is. A liberated mind is at ease with not knowing, is at ease with this now, if all I'm saying. So this is so far I can answer this, yeah? This question is answered? Thank you, yes. Yes, yeah, good. So, what is so the difference with intensive satsang? I do choose the people. Not everybody is ready. You have to 
be have be ready, and you will get somehow how uh, the message if you listen to open satsang. I do think what I mean with ready. And if you feel you are ready, you write to me and you tell me which months you would like to do the intensive, and then I will send you another letter for you to respond and answer all this question for myself to see for my side as well if you are ready. So this is very important and so this is always a small group of people, yes? And I do take care of each. It's not big, big, big and sometimes you have a chance to sit, oh yes, and I had also a hack and a smile you know, I mean, you see, not so many people feel attracted to Tulano because it is the last satsang. You feel what I'm saying? I hear what you say, but it's so difficult to understand. I assume a seeker is seeking and he is looking for enlightenment. And yeah, then somebody have <laughs> the, the attraction is, um, <laughs> you know, this the esoteric thing and all the things, what we wish, what we... Is, I don't know, whatever it is. I c for me, it's, I cannot understand it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Yeah, yeah, considering a situation to be a seeker, there then a you want to finish it. There's, there's a certain path in, uh, you have to... There's a, a knowingly, you are unknowingly, you're already on the path. You Later, once you know you're on the path, you know, ah, oh, I was always <laughs> just, I had no real directions, right? This makes you human. And so you have to go along, and I do often say to people, go to different masters, to, you know, go to Ekatole or Reed, or go to Mochi, go to Gangachi, go to different masters and then come to complete. Uh, for some people I ask to do so, and people who have been with different masters, they come, I'm the last satsang. You understand? And this is not necessarily needed for everybody, you understand? Also, it is not necessarily needed that you have meditated so many years and hours how I did. You have to get the message of meditation. You have to see the value of it, the message. You know, just get the message of meditation. And sometimes that you actually like to sit once a while there. It doesn't need to. Mm -hmm. You get the message. This is very much also helping you to be ready for the last satsang. And even that you want to become ready for the last satsang makes you already very ready. That you have that wish and not want to stay, continue to be a seeker on the path. It is a beautiful romance, you know, with no shoes and a rope, yes? and travel from master to master. It is a beautiful time as well, you follow what I'm saying? You understand? I understand, yeah. Yes. So it is not just like to expect them that they want to come to an end of the path. You are on the path and you authentically, you will sooner or later come to the last satsang. You know? Uh, if you wait too long, you may miss it. You understand? It is now here. It's good to know that it is there. I'm 58, so you can count. My father is more than 90, but I don't know if I'm my father's side or my mother's side. <laughs> you are always talking bullshit. <laughs> I have to talk some bullshit. We have to cut all these things, I guess. <laughs> what? When I arrived here a week ago, I knew all there ever is, is this, meaning the present moment and reality as it is. Now I know all there ever is, is bliss. What do you want to say about this? Why when uh, there is only now, of course, there is only now presence, moment. I wouldn't focus on presence. You understand? It's just only now. There's nothing you have to think of. There's only now if you not think of or not. You just have to once for all to know, Mr. Scientist, there is only now, isn't it? It doesn't take a Satori 
or a coconut falling on your head or you don't need to go to the sutras if this is not true. Anyone who is willing to be scientific can see there's only now, isn't it? And you say bliss, you speak about bliss, yes. Bliss is credited for no reason at all. So you had a moment of credited. That's why the question comes, you want to me understand how it comes, this bliss, this credited. Who wants to understand? Not even mind tries to understand when there is credited for no reason, isn't it? It is when your nature shines through as an experience, you feel what I'm saying. So why you want to question it? Sometime you experience, sometime not, but it is still your nature, yes. It's always there, regardless the circumstance, yes. So this is all I can say about it, yeah? Is it so answered for you? Yes, it's answered for me. Say, say yes or no? Yes, you say yes. Yes, ah, yes okay, it I is answered for I me. I couldn't hear it. In your response to my most authentic question, you said something like, there is a tendency in mind to complete the picture. For example, when one person communicates the positive aspects of something, mind would drive the other person to add the negative side of that same thing. All my life, there was the confusion that this tendency of mind was contradiction and conflict was the result. What is your comment to this? Yeah, this is about opini having opinions and confusing opinions with uh, thinking op your opinions are the ultimate truth. Rather to recognize how changeable they are, you can change any time to another opinion. It is so changeable, yes. So the tendency of the mind, if you have conversation, just ordinary conversation, you have your opinion, you will notice uh, somebody say a certain, has a certain opinion and then you have also opinion which somehow maybe uh, just speaks an opposite opinion which is not ultimately not separate. It is just trying to complete. You will not, you may agree with the opinion as well, but you speak another or just the opposite of it. Both, in a way, are right from their standpoint, you understand. And in as well, it is not eternal. Mm -hmm. This opinion, you can get up and say, oh, I could just switch to the other guy opinion. You understand. So this is uh, just simply to see how this uh, mind functioning, rather, it is a functioning. You understand? So then it is not disturbing in a way of, y you, you understand that this is uh, the tendency and uh, I think there's nothing wrong with it. It's just simply how this mind functions. It wants to say other things to complete a certain. It's not necessarily the negative, but often uh, people sometimes I think or just speak negative so that the other speaks positive because some people they always speak negative, always bad news, bad news come with some bad news so they're going to talk good news, you understand? So it's just a bit like that how it works, you follow what I'm saying? You know, this is uh, this mind, you know? So a liberated is a bit different, once liberated the mind, you know? But it is to start to see how it functions. And so it is natural for the mind. Cat bypass will bound to bark, who knows? <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? and say certain things, yeah, whatever. Is it so bit answered? It's not uh, in that way complete. It is really to, uh, these things are naturally taken care of uh, in intensive satsang when we liberate this mind. Then it is so more so clear how this mind is in fact functioning. You understand? It's more scientific, this body-mind organism, how it's functioning, or rather uh, trying to fight it. You follow what I'm saying? What is so nature? You come to know your very nature and then you see what is so nature. But if you do not awaken and this mind is not liberated, even you may can see what is so nature, uh, you will always doubt it. You will never be sure.
and you can be forever and never be sure you always doubt it. Doubt you make in Z, if what I'm saying. So at last satsang is uh, once for all say what is true. You, it's no more doubtable, you what I'm saying. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. very much so. Yeah. I am deeply touched by your loving care for cats. <laughs> no, yeah, okay. The only th thing you asked me to bring from my country was for your sick cat and the meetings we have organized, we had, or we had here were organized around the cat's needs. Please on elaborate on your relationship to cats and love. <sighs> Forget this. Why love? Anyhow, <laughs> generally, it's not that I'm a cat person or anything. I love all the animals. What, I lo what I'm in love with is innocence. And animals are innocent. And I love also people who are awake, they're also innocent. But uh, I have compassion and also love for people who are in ignorance and the wrong vision. I can't otherwise than love, yes, but they can be a nuisance. So I do, it's not because I have cats, it's just uh, my circumstance, the way I live, they fit better to my circumstance, how I live. I l would like to have a dog as well. I like this company with uh, animals where the communication is beyond language, very only now. I mean, this is uh, with, uh, with or without cat, there is only now, but it is just very nice to live a body life stream to be responsible for, you know, you're 100% committed if you have a pet, it is not just a toy. And to have a pet because you feel lonely, you better wake up first before you have a pet because a pet you're responsible maybe for 20 years. I have a cat 19 years. So it's not after 10 years, 14 years, your child goes to school and then who knows, you understand? No, for 20 years you have to be responsible. This is what I feel for them, because they are always stay children. They stay and they need you once they are a pet, they need you. They can't just live uh, wildly, you abandon them. You can imagine any kind of story, nature will take care of itself. This is uh, just an excuse not to need to care. People do that, to abandon. Yes, mm. or oh, let them send free, you know. <laughs> you, you have no idea what is free anyhow, you know. Yeah. So anyhow, so yes, okay, this is all I can say, really. It's just uh, uh, being playful in that lila, you know. It's a, if you now care for human, for animal, there is no difference. It is very good to find something in your life you want to commit yourself. You love to self, you love yourself to be committed to, it is many times annoying but something is so stronger to commit yourself for that. It is enriching display to live for. It can be really just a cat. You understand? So people do not understand. They do not understand the depths of life, the true living this life. You understand? To be really, the, the true art is the art of living, if what I'm saying. And it isn't, doesn't need to be a cat. It could be a dog, <laughs> but 100% commitment. It is, uh, I can't speak about it, anyone who knows, knows that. It is very valuable, it doesn't need to be a human. I find that it's very arrogant to think uh, humans are more valuable than to be committed to an animal. This is just the arrogance of humans, isn't it? That's why we are so careless with nature, because somewhere we put nature down. Not everybody, but this is a tendency of a non-liberated mind, great arrogance. Is it so far answered?
very yeah. much so. Yes, sir. Okay, good. I have just one clarification question came up. Uh, this l Many people might not be familiar with the word Lila. Lila, the play of Lila. Oh, play, play of of Lila. Uh, what, I what? thought I spoke in one of this interview about it. There is the, uh, this is just, I say the play of Lila is how I speak it, what, I, what it is for Dolano, I don't know in the books, I don't read books. But for myself, the play of Lila is to be in the right vision. It is uh, awake. To be awake, to be in the right vision, mind is liberated, no more separate from pure intelligence, you're no more confused with the appearance, with the duality vision. You know, you're no mm -hmm. more confused with mm -hmm. it. You mm -hmm. understand? It doesn't exclude, but you're no more confused because you're in the right vision. You have made a yep. turn, a shift, yeah. you know what counts, you understand. So mind is complete in its liberation, there is no more confusion, is no more separate from pure intelligence, which is goodness itself. If yeah. So it's a beautiful vehicle from source, which is so silent, you understand, yeah. can't speak, it, it uses this body to be playful in that lila, in its yeah. pure health, you understand. So the play of lila, once li it is for Buddha, it is the play of lila. Mm. It is so, your nature, who you are, source, pure intelligence is so beautiful, reflected. This is the play of Lila, Satchitananda, I call it Satchitananda, is reflected in the Lila. This is you, an invitation for you to awaken the beauty, the silence, the peace. You understand? It is only you can see it. Yeah. An invitation to wake up. So the play of Lila is goodness itself. There is no war. The, there is no real conflicts. It is the play. And as well, there is not uh, awake, there, there are not many. There's only source. And you will no, not have any separation. There is no more arrogance of you and I. There is just simply relating towards source. There is only source. If now cat gives an interview or dog or you, there's only source, it's the same source. All the respect for whom I, you understand. Yeah. So there is no more a win and lose game possible once you relate and know whom I and everybody is and mind needs liberation because we'll still ditch yeah. and wonder and not so sure and doubt and try to figure out the rest of it because you are still in a wrong vision. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I say that liberation of mind is needed that you are in the play of Lila and not in that win and lose game of samsara where you are in a comparison, in a competition with your wife, you understand. Because your natural situation, if you now know so or do not know so, your nature is dominant to everybody. It is dominant scientifically. If you are of course in your spiritual thing, it's not. But it's so obvious. It is true, the rickshaw driver, through all the living beings, whoever you meet. It's so there, dog, cat, you in the instant, in the mazy. You understand, so are so so this. So, there was something more I want to say. I, I'm lost. Mm. Not lost, never. <laughs> How I could you can, how could how, be, how, how, yeah. oh, I could ever be lost, but I just wanted this, yes, the win and lose of samsara, this is the non-liberated mind, not knowing who am I, this duality thing. Once awake and you're in the right vision, it does not exclude the appearance. You, you do no more uh, imagine yourself even separate from that. Once healthy. One's mind is complete in its liberation, you follow what I'm saying? So it is not to inc exclude like almost all the Advaita people with it, the logic, S mm -hmm. speak Maya, you understand? What is Maya is your non-liberated mind. What is Maya, your win and lose game of samsara? So I say, life is not a game. Yes, if you're, yeah. if you're in the wrong vision, yes, it is a game with your wife and so on, with your spiritual yeah. fellow traveler. Don't, don't uh, speak from your heart. <laughs> Be centered. Look how uncentered you are. I don't know what <laughs> stupid game about love you have, you know, na in the name of love. 
and so much nonsense when a loose game is going on and you call, oh, life is just a game and so there you go with your arrogance, you understand? No, and having no respect and only knowledge in your mind and think you know it all, does it make sense? You know, truly awakened, not any idiot can repeat a book, give satsang, Yep. Anyone can do, uh, and right now it is uh, there's it is a lot of going on. I so don't say everybody, but that it is going on. You know, it's good money for some people. If you travel around to collect people, I don't go anywhere. I invite people for the last satsang. For the last satsang, I do not go after you. Does it make sense what I'm saying here? Makes a lot of sense. For last satsang, you have to really surely know this is what I want, you know. And then you come over all these obstacles. So, okay, this is all I want to say about the play of Lila. Yes? Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So, we have another question. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you don't know, you have to go to your book, right? Yes. No, I can, uh, oh, uh, these are all questions already answered. I have. This is uh, what you were writing down. Yeah, even one but more. Yeah. So I thought, I thought there was... Uh, now we are in the free space of creativity. Yeah. Yeah. All the <laughs> oh, good. It went fast. Okay, so this, I think this is a nice short interview. I yeah. think it's just nicely complete, isn't yes, it? Yes, I think so too. Thank you very much for having been available for yes. all these encounters. Yes. Okay, it was very nice to meet you. Yes. It was yes. really, really a big, big pleasure. And the experience okay. I made this yes. week here in India, this was mind-blowing, Liter mind literally <laughs> mind-blowing. Mind yeah. Great, <laughs> yes. Thank you just for being. <laughs> yes, thank you too. Thank you too. Yes. Yeah, we had a nice meeting, huh? Yeah. Thank you for coming and um, I forgot his name. I Deva Setu. Yeah. Deva. Deva Setu. Deva Setu. I, I told him I'm very thankful that he sent you and so I feel very at ease with you. Yeah. Yeah. To have this interview. It's very yeah. nice. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> This is a big, 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 big pleasure and a great honor for me to yes. have taken this initiative also. Yeah, yeah it's an honor for me too that you felt that way to come here, mm. yes. Uh -huh. Yes, with listening to the open chats and you could somehow uh, how yeah. here yeah. that you want to share to Lano. This is, thank you so much, yes. Yeah. The last chat Good. Then, Om Shanti. Om Shanti.